Hello and welcome to the first tutorial of the snowman series. This is part of our week five and six exercises of uh, the 3D animation and modeling class. Uh, so let's get started. First I want to introduce to you a new tool. This new tool will uh, allow us to displace the vertices on different objects through painting. And it's called the paint sculpt geometry tool. So the way we access the sculpt geometry tool is through the polygon menu set. You go to mesh, sculpt geometry tool, and you click on the option box which will bring up the sculpt geometry tool settings. And as a tool, once it's selected, it shows up here with our tools. And uh, let's talk about that for a minute. Uh, first of all, we're, we're going to need a mesh or a surface to operate on so I'm going to create a uh, just a polygon plane here and the sculpt geometry tool works by sculpting by moving the vertices so the denser your mesh the more precision and accuracy you'll be able to have more control over the look of your mesh and the fewer the vertices uh, the less control you'll have for example if I go and I say there's only five divisions and I start pulling and, and pushing things uh, yes um, it will have influence but I'll be able to get much more detailed influence I'm just undoing um, with a, a denser mesh so let's go 100 by 100 and I just have the width and height as 100 as well okay so uh, first of all, you notice there's a paintbrush, and then at the tip of your paintbrush, you'll see a crosshairs and an arrow. The arrow is uh, kind of what direction those vertices are going to be pulled. Usually it's perpendicular to the surface, which is known as the normal. Uh, there are other ways it can be, uh, you can pull a surface or a face out in other directions, the view, the x axis, um, to any of these things. So, first of all, the red circle around the brush is your radius. And that can be manipulated through the radius uh, slider. Or if you hold down the B key, B for brush, hold down the B, you notice it changes to two arrows and I can slide left to right. And uh, that's going to affect the, the area of influence that our brush has. And then you have several operations. You have a push, you have a pull, you have a smooth, you have a relax, a pinch, and an erase. So let's just, uh, and I think by default, let's go ahead and reset the tool by, by default. It's still normal, and it updates with every stroke. So um, let's set our defaults to normal, or reset the tool to see the defaults. And I'm just going to show what happens. Hold down B. And when I hit, when I click, and you notice that it made an indention here, and that pushed the surface in. It was a push tool, but it only pushed at the amount of this max displacement. Uh, so max displacement uh, determines when I do click how far is it going to um, manipulate the surface. So we can take this up, and drive that up higher. You notice this one now is much deeper. Uh, than the initial one and I can go over again and uh, also you notice up here you can see the curve profile if you want softer edges see where the red circle is as there's a a greater fall off you get smoother edges uh, and you have something like that which will probably give you much kind of smoother edge here rather than something really hard that's going to give uh, something sharp and if this dense were more if this mesh were more dense it would have uh, a smoother effect um, so you have first you have push which I'm controlling the radius by the radius to how, how large or the B key and how far it pushes up or down with the displacement tolerance with the max displacement now Something to notice, 
suppose I want to go higher than five, but I'm limited. I, I it starts to zero and it, it gives me a ceiling here. Well, actually, you can go in and overdrive the ceiling. You can um, even if it's five, I can put twenty-five, and then all of a sudden my slider now goes to fifty. It, it whatever enter. So uh, you're not limited by the initial uh, slider. That, that's good to know. So now if I were to do a push, it would go quite deep. Um, so I'm going to undo all of this. And for this project, I want us to just experiment with a uh, kind of a larger brush, maybe a soft brush. And we're just going to do a pull. I don't, I don't want a lot of influence in the beginning, maybe three. And if we have the update on it's going to begin it's going to build on each other and we're just I want to try to make some mounds of snow and even this seems a bit small to me uh, uh, hold on just just um, not too regular may, maybe toward the sides build it up more but uh that is the idea is to get kind of some smooth rolling surfaces. Now as I do that, you notice there's sometimes it starts pinching on itself. That is not good typically and uh, and I can keep building in a certain area so much that it starts intersecting and pinching with other areas. Uh, one of these operations is the smooth tool which, can, which will average those out. So I have the smooth tool and it's it's like it's dissolving it away. Uh, the relax tool is very similar, but it keeps the major form more so. It doesn't average all the vertices, just ones that are very different. Um, it's a very subtle distinction between the the smooth and the uh, relax, but there there is something there. So so we're just we want to create a scene that could be uh, you know just a field of mounds of snow. Uh, we want a setting for the snowman we'll create later. So just take a couple of minutes and you know experiment with push and the pull. Uh, you can try the different profiles. Uh, you can try the smooth. Uh, you know, try different things with your max displacement. What if we change this significantly? Um, and uh, you do need to be careful because it can get really crazy and when it gets like this that is does not make for a good model so you always want to go back and kind of smooth you don't want intersecting uh, faces um, that you can have them really close but you just don't want things that get um, start penetrating one another So for, for our purposes, a, a snow bank, you can just, you can have some areas really high, really low, but the idea is just don't have any areas that are intersecting, and that will be fine. Uh, it doesn't have to be natural or realistic, but ha have some, have some fun, and uh, see what you come up with.